let's look at a couple of additional practice problems involving mass and moles. So here we're talking about vitamin C, a covalent compound with the molecular formula C6HAO6. The recommended daily allowance of vitamin C for children 4 through 8 is 1.42 times 10 to the negative 4 moles. And our question is, what is the mass of this daily allowance in grams? So we're given a number of moles, and our task here is to determine the mass corresponding to that number of moles. As always, we're going to draw a picture first. Vitamin C is a solid. Basically, we're looking at a lump of that solid containing 1.42 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of vitamin C molecules. That number of moles is a count of the number of molecules we're looking at. What mass that corresponds to does depend on the molar mass of vitamin C. And so we can calculate the molar mass as we've calculated formula mass previously using the given molecular formula, six carbons, eight hydrogens, and six oxygens for a total of 176.12 grams per mole is the molar mass. And a single molecule, we could say, weighs 176.12 atomic mass units within our solid sample of vitamin C. From here, because we know the number of moles we've got and we're looking for the number of grams corresponding to that number of moles, we're gonna use the idea that grams and moles are proportional and think in terms of proportional reasoning again. So this ratio of the number of grams or the mass of material we're looking at divided by the number of moles of material we're looking at is equal to a constant, the molar mass, right? And so we can set up a proportionality equation using these two ratios, the molar mass, 176.12 grams divided by one mole is equal to our unknown number of grams divided by 1.42 times 10 to the negative four moles in this daily allowance of vitamin C. And we can solve for X using simple algebra and we arrive at X is equal to 0 0.0250 grams. That's the mass corresponding to this number of moles. And just a quick note on conversions, I'm gonna show unit related things in purple generally as we work through practice problems. This corresponds to 25.0 milligrams of vitamin C. And this is cool because this is actually something you can check on a nutrition facts label, but that is the recommended daily allowance of, of vitamin C. That's probably not what, what's listed for adults, but easy enough to check online as well. In the second problem, we're looking at a 40 milligram sample of the compound saccharin, C7H5NO3S. And the two questions we want to answer are how many saccharin molecules are in this 40 milligram sample, and then how many carbon atoms can we find within that 40 milligram sample inside the molecules. So we're moving from talking about moles to actually counting the full blown number of molecules, which is going to bring Avogadro's number into the equation. So how many saccharin molecules is the first question. And then as an extension from that, after we've answered that question, we can answer how many carbon atoms do we find within that sample? As we did previously, the first thing we're going to want to do is to determine the formula mass and the molar mass for saccharin. And here you can take my word for it or verify it on your own if you want more practice with formula mass and molar mass. The molar mass is 183.18 grams per mole for saccharin. That means that one molecule weighs that same number of atomic mass units or AMU. Really quickly, let's convert that 40.0 milligrams into a mass in grams. That's gonna make it easier to work with the molar mass in grams per mole, 40 milligrams is 0 0.0400 grams. And now let's think in terms of proportional reasoning. Grams and moles are proportional, and we're gonna to need to go through moles if we want to calculate the number of molecules in terms of the actual counted number of, of molecules, the total, not in moles. So we start with the molar mass, 183.18 grams for every one mole of saccharin. We know we're dealing with 0 0.0400 grams. What we don't know is the number of moles that that corresponds to, but these two ratios must be equal. That's the definition of molar mass, essentially. This is easy enough to solve for x, and when we do that, we get that x is equal to 2.18 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of saccharin in this 40 milligram sample. Now, how do we take this number of moles to a number of molecules. Well, we use the idea that Avogadro's number 
is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, in this case, molecules per mole. So we can multiply this number of moles by Avogadro's number to find the total number of molecules. Just a quick note before we do that, if you don't like the exponent here and you want some other units to use, the millimole can be a convenient unit to use with moles since the mole is actually a pretty large unit in many cases. This corresponds to 0 0.218 millimoles, where that extra m corresponds to the prefix milli in this unit. So again, going back to the, the original idea, if we want the total number of molecules, capital N, we take the number of moles, which I'm representing here as lowercase n, and multiply by Avogadro's number, which the units of Avogadro's number we should think of as a number of molecules per mole. Generally, it's objects per mole. We're in a molecular context with a molecular compound, and so we want to think in terms of molecules per mole here. We do that multiplication, 2.18 times 10 to the negative 4 moles, times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules per mole, and we arrive at 1.31 times 10 to the 20th molecules. So naturally, you know, just as a quick sanity check, that's a huge number of molecules. This answer makes sense. So we've answered the first question. How many saccharin molecules are in the sample? What about the number of carbon atoms? Well, here we can still actually think in terms of proportionality, realizing that for every one saccharin molecule, there are seven carbon atoms within the sample since each molecule contains seven carbons. So we can take that number of saccharin molecules and simply multiply it by seven carbon atoms for every one molecule to find the number of carbon atoms. And when you do this multiplication, you arrive at 9.19 times 10 to the 20th carbon atoms. Again, unsurprising that this is a massive number of carbon atoms in a macroscopic sample of saccharin. 